Hello and welcome back to SRB Gaming, episode 13 of KSP Exploration Series. This is the R2 R2 uh, Probe, Asteroid Redirect Device 2, and this is the launch. Uh, R2 is meant to be the mining variant of the asteroid drones, the R1 is just to redirect. This is the heaviest launcher I have built so far. It has two large side boosters, which I finally got to work, and a central core, it can get the 26 ton R2 to orbit. It's a very large probe, and the fairing adds another 15 tons, but that is uh, jettisoned pretty early. After booster separation, the single core brings us up to space, and the second stage brings us all the way into an elliptical transfer orbit with the asteroid. The ARD-1 had a little bit of xenon left, so I used it to maneuver the asteroid into a moon encounter tra uh, trajectory which then spit it out after gravity assist in a fairly inclined but not so elliptical orbit as it used to be. The R2 is powered by four Nerva engines which are the atomic motors with a very high ISP of 800 in the vacuum. Their thrust is not very high, but it is significantly higher than ion engines. They also do not require power to operate, and they only run on liquid fuel. As such, the R2 uses four liquid fuel tanks uh, surrounded around the main body of the probe, with two SAS units, a claw for attaching to the asteroid, one ISRU converter to convert ore to materials, two drills to extract ore, and four giant solar panels which will provide all the power we need. There is also two RTGs to provide emergency power and battery supplies. This thing is built to extract resources from an asteroid, refuel itself, and refuel any ships that dock to the asteroid. As this is a Class C asteroid, it will last for quite a long time. The second stage of the R2 is a Rhino engine, and as usual, it's pretty good. It brought us all the way into the transfer orbit I needed. After that it was jettisoned and the Nervas took over, which is the final stage of the rocket. So making this a three-stage rocket unless you include the side boosters, which were jettisoned fairly soon. Those used separatrons to push them away from the vehicle and uh, extended side uh, decouplers to make sure they don't fall. The asteroid contains about 34 tons worth of ore. The R2 contains an ore tank that holds 1,500 units of ore, and it can also store both oxidizer and liquid fuel. Since its engines only use liquid fuel, I didn't bring any oxidizer, but if I needed to, I could use these fuel tanks to fill up for future missions. What I'm planning is that if I ever have to refuel at this asteroid, I will dock the ship and then run the uh, ISRU converter into that ship's fuel tanks directly. I will likely have to change the inclination of the asteroid as it's still a little bit inconvenient, although significantly better than it used to be. However, that is not in this video, although it wouldn't be very hard with the Nervas. I just don't want to use too much uh, uh, up too much of the fuel. About 83% of the asteroid's mass is initially ore, and the rest of it is just unusable rock. So it's pretty good, with an initial mass of about 40, a little bit over 40 tons. Ard 1 is still attached, providing us with a little bit more power than we would have had before. However, it al has almost exhausted its xenon tanks. If it detached, it would be capable of leaving the asteroid, but it wouldn't be able to do much else. It's going to stay there because it provides extra power generation. Now, like I said, Ard 2 is the biggest thing I've launched into orbit in one go so far. With the new 1.0 aerodynamics, it's a little bit difficult because you have to have a giant fairing, which weighs a lot. But it makes up for it by being quite aerodynamic. A similar thing to the ARD-2 will have to be sent to DRESS along with ARD-1. The plan for that is to send an ARD-1 to DRESS, have it move the asteroids if they need to be moved, or just rendezvous with one and provide power. Then an ARD-2 will be launched uh, on a larger rocket because it's going to need more fuel to get to DRESS, attached to the DRESS droids, and uh, use the fuel in that to create a refueling station. Then the ARD-1 can detach, catch another asteroid, bring it over to the initial asteroid, and dock them together to eventually form a connecting asteroid station. That is the plan for the DRESS fueling station, and this launch of the ARD-2 to Kerbin orbit is just meant to test a ship that will be used for this purpose. So, that is the mission. I 
I'm probably going to need to get a Class E asteroid because after drilling for a while and filling the tanks and about filling the ore tank with a third of ore, it did significantly exhaust ore, although I still have plenty of tons of it left. Now, as you can see, the orbit is about 45 degrees inclined, so it's not great, and that means a lot of delta-v to fix your orbit when you have to uh, encounter the trajectory. This means that I'm likely going to have to use the Nerva engines, as I said before, to move the asteroid into a more equatorial orbit, like the moon. Um, what I might try is getting another moon or Minmus encounter, and then just breaking when I get there and leaving it in orbit around the moon. If I can do that, uh, it will be much easier to encounter as I just have to get a moon encounter or Minmus encounter, which is easy. And then after that, getting encounters in its sphere of influence is not that hard because you can get... you have bigger margin for error and the orbits are faster and there's less velocity overall. It also makes it easier to visualize where your uh, velocity is as you can just break relative to the moon instead of Kerbin. So that, that might be a plan. Another plan would just be to fix the orbit and leave it in the main orbit. Um, this will probably serve as a refueling depot for uh, the, the pole missions. Um, Gilly, where one colony is planned to be headed, is, does, is not going to require refueling because it's pretty close, but jewel missions, larger jewel missions, will, will definitely require refueling. And uh, this is where it's probably going to happen. Horizon's orbital station isn't nearly as useful as this because it doesn't contain the asteroid. In fact, I might actually move Horizons out here, my low Earth, my low Kerbin orbit station. I might, uh, well, I'm, I probably have to detach the observ observing module, and then leave that in low Kerbin orbit. That can be the station, and then move the bulk of the station using some sort of booster, probably similar to the R2's uh, transfer stage, the Nervos. Move it to the asteroid and rendezvous with it. It didn't require actually that much fuel. There was an initial braking of about 700 meters per second, and I was a little bit afraid, but after that it didn't require much, probably less than 500 after that, to uh, actually connect with the asteroid. And once you get within a kilometer, it's pretty easy. It bumped around a bit, so it didn't attach right off the bat like it should have, but a little bit of moving with SAS and it's good. I was sure to attach lots of SAS, two large wheels to this thing, along with the integrated inside the probe core, which will definitely help well, it did definitely help move the, move the ship as fast as it needed to be moved. So for the pole missions, when I send colonization equipment, uh, we're not actually nearing any transfer windows yet to Jewel or Eve or Dress or any of them. They're, we're nowhere near the transfer windows, so we're going to have to wait. That's why I'm launching this. But um, for the pole missions, I will likely launch a... Okay, here, here's what I'm going to do. So next transfer window, I'm going to send a rover with surface scanning modules. I'm going to send a second satellite which will have fuel storage on it as well as docking ports so as an emergency fuel source. And then that will be on one launch and I will not require refueling for that because that's going to be pretty small. I'm pretty sure I can get that under five tons payload which is not much to uh, pull. Not bad at all. And so the next mission though, at the, the third transfer window, since we already passed the first, is going to be the actual colonization equipment without crew. The crew will be in the fourth transfer window. So the third transfer window is going to send over giant fuel tanks, ore holders, ISRU converters. Essentially we need to modify, uh, take what the R2 has and put that on the surface of pole. So that is going to require a lot of fuel and I'm likely going to want to use the fuel in this asteroid. Now, right now, it's useless as a refueling station because of its extremely high inclination. But again, I'm going to change that, and uh, it will be quite useful because rendezvousing with the equatorial orbit is significantly easier than uh, doing it now. So, that's the plan for colonization. Gilly will likely not need a refueling because of how close it is again. And the transfer windows are approaching, although we're nowhere near them yet, so I will be doing more stuff in Kerbin curve in orbit before we uh, approach those, but then we'll be sending the next batch of probes to Pole, and uh, for Gilly we'll be sending some equipment to the surface, and for Dress we'll be sending probably an ARD-1 at the next uh, transfer window. So there's a lot of stuff to look forward to, a lot of stuff I'm looking forward to, and that should be coming up soon. So thanks for watching KSP Exploration. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe. I'll see you next time. Like and comment if you want to.